I see sun on a lot of you. I can tell that you've been out in this 
90 degree heat I have as well. Maybe you've enjoyed it. I've maybe stayed inside for a good chunk of it. <laughs> some of us love <laughs> summer more than others in this church, but happy in every season. My dad says this a lot and I agree. I like every season in its time because I like that we get all four seasons. I, when we were down in Cameron and I went down to Charleston, they were blown away by the fact that we have winters that get below zero. They're like, oh, you can really get that cold? And I was like, yes, and there's snow. And they're like, feet of it? And I said, maybe on a bad day. And they're like, oh, we can't even think of that. They said they, you know, they get a little measly centimeter of snow and this whole town shuts down and they have to go to all the stores and they raid all the food. And I was like, oh, it's just another day for us. You take driver's ed, and they're like, and you know how to drive on the ice in the snow, right? And you say, yes, I can, because we do all four seasons. So I think they're all good in their time. We get to have a little bit of every taste. And so for those who are quick to say, oh, Illinois, what does it have to offer? Well, we have the four seasons. There are a few other questionable things, but that's a good thing that we have going for us. Happy to have you all here today. Happy that we're doing summer together in church. I feel like I've done every summer at this church in my life, and it always kind of has the same feel. You can tell everybody's a little lighter, a little, some of us are not working right now and are having just a lovely time with that, but it's a good season, and yes, you all look warm and red and happy in your faces as well. Lexi, you far outshine me when you uh, make announcements, but I was thinking about that song, Give Me Jesus. We Americans, by and large, are spoiled brats. Well, Pastor, you didn't have to say that. Yeah, I did. I'm a spoiled brat. Just thinking about God's blessings. I was thinking about if you live in Haiti, you'll be walking down the, oh, you're walking somewhere, and you're walking in open sewage in the streets. They flush their toilets, and their, their waste is running down the streets of Haiti. Hasn't America been blessed? Kudos, is that the right word for Louisiana's governor that uh, signed uh, into uh, law, restoring uh, back into the classroom, uh, the Ten Commandments, I was going to say Pledge of Allegiance, uh, back into the classrooms in the state of Louisiana, the Ten Commandments. And it passed another law. I heard that I can't even uh, be comfortable in sharing before a church congregation. We'll leave that till a later time. But let's take an, one of my favorite songs, Give Me Jesus. I told Gloria this week, I'm going on 77. And uh, I was thinking, I want to write down a list of things that I'd like to have, so, something that's uh, uh, first and foremost in my thoughts. I wrote down five or six items. Not one of them was for me. Two or three things I want to do on the house. And of that little list, two of them were actually Bibles. And now I'm sounding like Mr. Holy Joe Sunday School, but I don't mean to sound that way. One of them is the bicentennial history of the Sunday school, and I want it because a gentleman named last name Crenshaw was one of the uh, beginners of Sunday school in America. Did you know that? I didn't till several years ago when I read it that uh, a Crenshaw was uh, one of the main leaders in American Sunday School. So I wrote that down. I'm going to order it. It's still available, uh, per, a pretty Bible, and uh, a lot of information and a good history of America's Sunday School. Then I want to give Gloria a pretty leather bound expositors. Uh, Bible and she has expressed a desire to have that Bible we've not got one yet 
but I want to get one for her. Well, more and more I sound like a Mr. Righteous Holy Joe Sunday School guy. But uh, I can't think of anything on that list that I want or that I need. Oh my, has God blessed me? And oh, three children that love God and they respect the Lord. Three granddaughters. They're just uh, as sweet as they can be, and I love them. I love them so much. And a great grandson that's the apple of my eye right now. I've got, uh, let me include the sons in law. I've got, uh, I've got some wonderful uh, sons in law. And uh, thank God for men that are in church this morning. They're, they're in church. They respect God enough that they're in church whenever the doors are open and when their work schedule allows it. And I'm being wordy this morning, but it ends up, give me Jesus. As far as I'm concerned, you don't have to get me anything materially. Just give me your love. Just, uh, just bless my life with just living and be, being yourself. So if you ever think, Pastor, what would you like to have? I couldn't think of anything. Just give me Jesus. Thanks. We are blessed, are we not? Amen. And now, please join me in welcoming my father, Sean Middleton. Yeah. Good morning. Morning, everyone. I uh, thank you for that. Reflections from Richard. Maybe we, we need to officially give him some props for when he's being uh, you know, thoughtful and observant and things like that and thinking back. And um, I, For whatever reason, while he was, he was speaking, I was thinking of that song. Um, and it's popular. It was kind of a contemporary Christian song. What is your life? Is it where you wanted to be? Are you who you want to be? And I mean, and there's some really interesting lyrics there. And you kind of think about, and I know Sunday school got me really spinning with these big picture thoughts of, you know, and, and the verse just becomes crystallized to me. What's your life but a vapor? Your life but a vapor. And I'm like, Sean, that's it? That's the best I come up with in my life? It feels like a vapor? But I don't know what... I, this is my own reflection, maybe kind of call this <laughs> my own being a bit nostalgic, is uh, lately, I don't know, you know, we got punctuation marks, I call them in life, things that you really remember. And then there's days, have you ever had that experience where you, somebody reminds you of something, you think back to a day, and you're like, I forgot we did that. And it's like some days are just, I don't want to call them throwaway days, where it's like, you know, you move through time, and you look back, and you reflect, and just like what you were saying, and and. God is good in the midst of everything. I cannot imagine living life without something to guide my steps. What is man? To, in, is it in him to direct his own steps? I don't believe it is. I, uh, no matter how smart I think I am or how much I learn or what I experience, all those things still pale in comparison in light of eternity. And if that's the case, then why wouldn't I deal with that right now? And so, Richard, you're right. That song that you were referring to, um, Hobby Lobby, you know, has some good stuff every once in a while. This isn't a plug, gratuitous plug for Hobby Lobby. But uh, they had it on a plaque, and we ended up getting that. I think girls got it for me for Father's Day or something at one point. So we have that. It's like, um, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. And it's just that lyric. And it, it is. I just, you know, you start thinking, singing that th song to yourself. And what else do we need? I mean, is, that, is it that simple? Is it that simple? Uh, that's not this message this morning, Richard. You're just kind of giving me food for thought, all of us. So uh, thank you for that. Um, so anyway, God's good. All right, I'm, back. I'm still on my funnies with kids because 
there's just so many and I can't get off of it. Okay, so I got a few. These are just kind of cute. All right. To my children, a, a parent's uh, comment. Never make fun of me having, a, having to help or ask you for help with my computer or anything else electronic. I taught you how to use a spoon, remember? <laughs> I taught you how to do everything for that matter. Um, your five-year-old may have been watching a bit too much reality TV when you go to a wedding and as the four bridesmaids walk down the aisle, he leans in and whispers, is this the part where the groom decides which one to marry? <laughs> like, like, well, you know, what do kids think? Like, oh, isn't that how you do that? Wait, um, you. Anyway, let's see. Oh, one more maybe. To anyone thinking about having kids, my two-year-old threw a terrible temp temper tra tantrum because she couldn't get rid of her shadow on the playground. So anyway, so last one. I thought this is cute too. When I turned 60, all my grandchildren sang happy birthday to me. My five-year-old granddaughter asked me how old I was. And when I told her, she seemed very confused. That must be really high, she said. I can't even count that high yet. Like, you know, kids, uh, it's just all perspective. Everything about it, every, every moment. If, I could, if that could be something from my the little pre-sermonette, it's live every moment and enjoy everything along the way. Enjoy the ride. I don't know if you want to call it that because time is fleeting. And that's not this morning's message. I have a whole different thing that I wanted to focus on this morning. And, and this one God gave me several weeks ago um, that... And, and I love I love the the play on you, you'll understand. But the, this morning, the title of this morning's message is "Oh My Soul," some very much needed perspective. And so, and my my kind of I've got several theme scriptures we're going to talk about, but we're going to turn to Psalm forty-two and one if you want to go there to start this morning's discussion. But what I became mindful of as I was thinking about this this topic, this discussion, "Oh My Soul," and kind of this premise and it's referred to in the psalms multiple times by the way but any of you that know from english class want to want to click english class this morning hey english wasn't even my like she says yes okay i english wasn't my strong suit but you know you've had you got to learn things as you keep moving along in life so anybody knows that if you speak in the first person it's you speaking i and if it's in the second person i'm speaking to you that's i mean i'm referring to you and if I refer in the third person, it's more of a they because I'm referring to something from an outside perspective or someone, something happening to someone, right? You've written, written books that are read, or sometimes it's all about me. It's my perspective. But in the third person, I'm referring to something or someone as if I'm outside of that for a moment, right? So what's so interesting is think about life. And do you know people that would talk about themselves in the third person? They'll say, Sean thinks this is not a good idea, and quit referring to yourself in third person. Just talk to me, you know. But, okay, we could be joking about that. But what's interesting is when it comes to us and our lives and knowing the right way to go in life, how many know that many times we can, does anybody talk to themselves? You don't have to admit it out loud, okay? <laughs> if you don't want to, that's fine. Maybe you don't do it out loud. Maybe you just do it under your breath. Like, and Richard jokes about that. Sometimes he feels like he needs to grab himself by his own shirt collar and be like, Richard, get a hold of yourself. And like, you're talking to yourself in third person because you're, you know, like, Richard says. <laughs> well, so what became very apparent as read through several of these Psalms, especially that David and others, many times, they're, there comes a time in life where simply reading something and absorbing something in the natural doesn't make it past all our internal filters. What do I mean by that? Sean, explain. Sometimes our own self-deceptive filters act on our very words in such a way that we believe our own junk. And we can even say it out loud, but sometimes it takes getting a hold of yourself and saying, Sean, what are you doing? As if it's not even me I'm talking to. Would anybody acknowledge at times, or at times you need a good talking to yourself, even if you don't want to hear it? So maybe you need to give yourself the talking to. Okay, 
Sure. <laughs> right? All right, so when you think about this for a moment, this actually this resonated multiple times through the Bible, that this, this discussion happened, where it was referring to, I'm, I'm trying to get a hold of myself. Paul was a master of this discussion. And in his own lament, and he, Solomon did a bit too, kind of his own lament over his life and perspective and where he was and why he couldn't seem to get himself on the right path. But Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. He's no longer calling himself Paul. He's like, the, the persona that I find in myself, in me I find no good thing. If I'm honest, if I truly re recognize and see where I am, I'm not where I should be. And I, the things I want to do, I end up not doing. And the things I don't want to do, that's what I end up doing. What, what is this body of death I found myself in? <laughs> and it's a total lament. But yet Paul comes out of that and said, but I thank God through Jesus Christ, who has given me a pathway through this life, through this body, this brokenness. I mean, we've been, we've been talking about little ones lately a lot, and you know, we happen to have little ones just watching them grow up, and they can go the wrong direction. No matter how much I adore, I've adored my children and now grandchildren, guess what? I even acknowledge they may do the wrong thing every once in a while. <gasps> And that's hard for people to admit, especially today's day and age. you got a lot of parents, like, their t kid is totally cutting up and just destroying or tearing up. And they're like, aw, they're just tired. They're like, no, they're a wreck. <laughs> they're, they're out of control. I mean, and that's okay. The point is, that's why the Bible has this discussion on a rod of correction drives that from them. It's not, it's not beating them to pieces with a rod. It's that loving hand of discipline is what changes our direction and our perspective and many times us we can be adults and just like paul was in that bit of lament sometimes we've got to get a hold of ourselves and talk to ourselves don't do it out loud unless you want to draw attention in public or something like that but david did it paul did it many people do this so if you want to go with me to psalm 42 starting verse 1 for the director of music and the sons of Korah, as the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul, I'm referring to my own soul, or he is in this context. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? This, I love this kind of, this is a different uh, uh, translation, but I kind of like this one. My tears have been my food day and night. I, I, I love, because he's being raw and honest here. Have you ever had... You're, whatever you're going through, you're so struggling. I, think about that. My tears have been my food day and night. What's he saying? I can't even eat over what I'm going through. I, it's, it's cost me my appetite. It's cost me my sleep. I might, I'm struggling with what I'm going through. Well, men say to me all day long, where's your God? Ever had any, who, you got friends like that who needs enemies kind of perspective? This is the Job mentality. We were talking about this on a Sunday night here recently. Like, when your friends are around being like, you should just curse God and die. There's no point in living. Like, who needs friends if that's, who needs enemies if you got friends like that? But people say that to us in their own brokenness. Like, that doesn't help me. But again, keep going. because These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving, among the festive pe people. It's wrong. And then five. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? He's talking to himself in an in outside perspective. Like, why are you stuck here? And it's the same thing that the, the lepers that were staying outside the gate. That story that's so wonderful. They were struggling. They were frustrated. They were depressed. And they were felt like there was no hope. And they said, they said within themselves, why are we sitting here till we die? They were saying to themselves, sometimes we've got we've to say something to ourselves as if it's not even us in order to get past our own filter. Isn't that something? So think of this. So it keeps going. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. Sean. Put your hope in God. Why don't you remember those things when it gets tough? Why don't you remember that he's the shepherd that keeps you comforted in the valley of the shadow of death? 
Why do you forget that? And I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this to you for you to do this to yourselves. Like, wait, I count my blessings like Richard just talked about. And they are mighty. They're great. Why am I so downcast? And it says, why are you downcast, O oh, my soul, and disturbed within me? And it says, for I will yet praise him, my Savior, my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep. This is, a, this is a deep message, but I like this part. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. All night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to the God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? It's the same thing Jesus said. My God, why have you forsaken me? Had he forsaken him? No. But in his frustrated, depressed, anxious, fearful state, it, I can't see anymore. I can't see that path forward. It looks like a, I'm looking through a glass darkly. I, I can't see that path forward. Why must I go on mourning, oppressed by the enemy? And, and then again, why are you downcast, O oh my soul, disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Okay. There is a bunch there, right? So if I just had a, just a couple quick bullets out of some of those things. You know, he talks about he's thirsting, he's longing for God as the deer pants for the water brook. What a, what a vibrant image. If you can picture, if you've been so thirsty, you've been out working, it's a hot, warm day, and you're working along, and you're just sweating, and you're just like, oh, I just want to, I need a drink so bad, I can't stand it. And, and he's acknowledging I, I need God to that point, and many times I've, I'm so flippant about my relationship with God, I don't seek him, I don't, I'm not going after him, and so it shouldn't be a shocker when I can't find him. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open to you. I mean, these are, these are very vivid imagery pieces in the Bible that make it clear, God is, if God is not found of you, is he hiding? Think about that for a moment. If God cannot be found by you, is he hiding? Or, I mean, think about playing hide and seek. Everybody knows that game, play that as a kid, so fun. Did you ever have a game where you're playing with people and somebody got busy and you're hiding? <laughs> are they going to find me? And like, are they coming? I've been here forever. Are they quit playing. Well, well, what's the point of playing the game? They're not even trying to find me anymore. Well, Hello? And then, and then if nobody does find, the girls were terrible at hide and seek because they'd be like, they'd start laughing. <laughs> like, I can hear you in that little cabinet. <laughs> You're no longer hiding anymore. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, okay, I see you. But can you imagine if I just gave up hi finding, it'd be so wrecked, right? Like, oh, you didn't care. You didn't want to come find me. I'm just hiding. I'm so excited to play the game, be the part of this experience. But we can think about God in, in some context of, I, I need God in my life. God, where are you? And I'm doing zero to seek him, to invite him even, to, to cultivate something with him that can help me through these days. I ignore him, but yet I expect him to bail me out. And at the same time, it's why the psalmist here is, part of his lament is, I, I need to get a hold of this body and straighten it up. Oh, my soul, why are you so downcast? Why are you so down? There's so much to be help, happy about, so much to be joyful about. And I kind of mentioned about the sleep, and um, I was even thinking, Casting Crowns has been one of my spirit uh, groups lately. I just, uh, I, I, I wrote down also, I got a number of songs that kind of come to mind. And I like songs because in, when you're struggling, you know, praise the Lord. And it was just a simple song. What a beautiful one. But truly, when we are struggling, downcast, our souls disquieted within me. What a powerful image word there. But I had the song, Casting Crowns, but the voice of truth tells me a different story. Voice of truth do not be afraid. I mean, so in, uh, singing that song for you. You can say, keep singing it while I'm talking. Because it's things like that. We need those songs in the night to turn our, 
our sorrow into our mourning into joy. We need those. And sometimes we got to get a hold of ourselves and get back to something different. And so as I kind of there's a number of points. You know, I was talk about this like the there's a becomes a turning point within each of us. And it it's the note that I had made it really is it's kind of like it's going back to the prodigal. And that prodigal story, which is a Jesus story, remember? It's like, how many of us have to have enough? You know what I'm talking about? We've got to have, a, have had enough. Like, how much do you want to take? Like, uh, Sean, that's pretty curt, crass. Don't you know what I'm going through? We, that's the point. We all go through stuff. And the point is, we don't want to stay there. In a way, we need to think about it this way. We want to graduate past our, our challenges, move us on to what's coming, whatever is next, but strengthen me for the road ahead and bring me through so that I know it's not in vain. What I've been through is not in vain. Everything is working for me, a far more exceeding weight of glory. It's bringing about something in me that, that tells me and gives me a, a pathway. I love this. I had made a couple notes about the precious promises of God or what changes. The, it gives us a different perspective on this thing. Like, at some point, we've got to take control. We've got to take, we, we've got to come to ourselves. The prodigal, it says, came to himself. And I know I've referred to it before, but anybody that was a, we were, Tom and Jerry was a favorite cartoon when we were young. And they, I don't even know if the kids watched Tom and Jerry. I don't know if they could anymore. Some of it was pretty violent. <laughs> watch them. But, Tom, it was, it was just, it was very typical for Tom especially to be like, doom, the little thing, the idea, the light bulb pops up in the little thing over his head, like, doom, he just had an idea. And it's like, many of us have to have that for our, ourselves. We have to come to ourselves. And if we're, if we're not on our own, then maybe we need to say, oh, my soul. We need to tell ourselves what's going on and what's our pathway and the potential where we're going and <clears throat> and remember again the precious promises of god his goodness and i know it, though i had made that comment about that when we graduate we don't want to go back to where we came from you it, most any of us that graduated high school most people we talk to don't say i just loved high school it was my favorite time in my entire life most people are like get me out of there not going back if I had to tell you, oh, actually worse, how many would like to go repeat junior high? Ooh, no hands in the building. <laughs> like, oh, I, just, I go through torture first. It was torture. It felt like it. I don't know. But the point is you graduate through those things. I'm not going back. I've lived through and learned, lived and learned through those things enough to know that God is good in the midst of all the things I go through. And I move past that. I had a note here. This is actually a really wonderful story. In lieu of time, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but anybody that, if you've heard the story of Joni Erickson Tata, and she's got a wonderful testimony, but basically back in, um, was it been, in 1967, she was swimming, she, was, she, had, she dove into too shallow water, fractured her, by, her back, and um, she became a quadriplegic after that situation. And so you think, what do you do? I mean, we can go through difficult, difficult times in this life, and we can look at someone else and think, I couldn't do that. Or, but you're living life in your shoes and you're going through your experiences. Every one of us have something. But I like her comment. She, she made this, she, she, this is her testimony. She said, there's very few days when my soul does not require a good talking to. On most mornings when pain encroaches, I demand my soul to come into alignment with the Holy Spirit. I order it to stand at attention and take orders from God for the day. That it rejoice in the day that's been made by its creator. That it ascribe to the holy purpose for living. That it's quit being sullen. Just, do you need to tell yourself, knock it off. Do we need to do that sometimes? Knock it off, Sean. Enough. Enough wallowing. Enough. Anyway, and keep going. She, she said, it quit being sullen and hopeful in Jesus. And that it rejoice in the Lord. For therein lies its strength. Sometimes quadriplegia is just plain tiring. Add it to, to it chronic pain, and it can wear on the soul. It's why, when I deal with the pain, I often pray, 
Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. That was Psalms 4311. Join me in urging your soul to find its solace, comfort, and encouragement in Jesus Christ. And that was that was Joni Hada's actual comment that she had made. So what does this mean? I mean, if she could go through life and find her path forward. I was re-listening to Mercy Me has a great song, and I know I've mentioned this one too. I said I was like a bunch of songs this morning. But it's their song, Say I Won't, and it's dedicated to a friend of theirs that lost limbs, all four, I think. And it, um, I think one of the verses in the song, the phrases in the song says, did I find out I've, I've not really been living? I, it, are, you, are you just going through the motions, or are you truly living life? God gave you life and breath today so what are you doing with it and do you need a good talking to today that says oh my soul and and there's another one there's another there's several of these verses of course and um, another great one is psalm 103 and in lieu of time I, I, i'm gonna have to step through it quickly that one i had pulled up here but let me let me do this one quickly because it's great just several verses here bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. That's a song, by the way. He has done great things. Hallelujah. All right. Bless the Lord, O my soul. He says it again. And forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. I mean, this goes on and on and on, which I, I just love that premise. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Folks, the same way I can lament is the same way I have to push myself, make myself. By, Paul said it this way. I've got to, he said, get under my body. I've got to push it to ascribe to the positive things that I know are within me. I know that my hope is in God. I hope that Danny, uh, what's his name? That also sings that Give Me Jesus. I love that. Um, Goki, Goki, Danny Goki. Um, he's got a song, my, my Hope in Front of Me. I said, I'm going to keep thinking of songs, right? It's a good song. But, you know, it's, it's at moments where you're struggling that you need a song in your heart. You need something to kind of lift you out of that circumstance and, and change the perspective. Like, my hope's in front of me. There's a light. I can still see it. It, it, it kind of refers to in that. And in the same way, I can say, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. I, I could tell myself I'm praising God, be, not because I feel it necessarily, but because I need it. Because why sit I here till I die? What am I doing putting up with less than the, God's best for me? Why am I doing that? The prodigal, the same way, said, I'm dying of starvation, and I'm, I'm basically wallowing with the pigs. And the servants in dad's house are doing better than me. What am I doing? I, I, I'd be better off just being a servant in dad's house than staying in my current situation. Something's got to change. You ever heard that phrase? Something's got to give. Something's got to give. And ultimately, it may mean that we've got to do something to ourselves to snap ourselves out of ourselves. Change it up. It's time to change up. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. Think about all that. And, and there is a, uh, as I talk about that song, I had written that down separately. And I'm going to step through that, though. So I have, an, there's another couple songs that um, jump out at me as well. One that's been, you know, you get stuck on a song. Lately, if this is, and it's not brand new, but I've been stuck on this song by Casting Crowns. And the song is, it was kind of my... Uh, motivation or, or inspiration for this message this morning it's the casting crown song that says oh my soul and it's a beautiful song but i i love how he's interpreting some of these very verses but i like i'm just going to read you a couple of his uh, phrases because i love his imagery that he also puts out for us oh my soul oh how you worry oh how you weary from fearing you lost control isn't that the truth Many times in life, it's our loss of our perceived loss of control that brings such anxiety to the way we live life. You're, this, 
was the one thing you didn't see coming. And no one would blame you, though, if you cried in private, if you tried to hide it away so no one knows, no one will see you if you stop believing, if you just give up, if you just fall, if you just call it quits, if you just said there's no point in going on. No one would blame you. I mean, that's the point of this. But then what's he do? He hearkens back to the psalmist and he says, Oh, my soul, you're not alone. And I love this. There's a place where fear has to face the God you know. There's a place where fear has to face the God you know. The one that is within you. My hope lies in God. My hope is in something and someone so much bigger than me, so much more powerful than me, that when my, I'm, oh my soul, why are you downcast? Why are you wearied? Why are you disquieted within me? Why are you falling apart so it seems like there's no hope and instead i can say oh bless the lord oh my soul forget not all his benefits he keeps me he he leads me beside the still waters restores my soul prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies and that's where i love this there's a place where fear has to face the god you know the one that controls the universe is in charge of everything. So when I'm struggling, when I'm, and I love this, because he's like, let him show you how you can lay this down because you're not alone. And I could read that whole thing because that's just such a good one. I don't know why. I, re I listen to that song on my commute, and it's just, it gives me great joy in the midst of the difficulties that you know, we face that we're going through. So what's it look like? What's it look like? How do I bless the Lord, oh my soul? Sean, it's super easy for you to preach it super easy how do i live it how do i do that but at some point and i love this phrase bending a knee to the one who is worthy of praise and adoration and i, and I had a whole thing here on what some of that meant and um i'm not gonna in lieu of time i can't i'm not gonna get into all of that the point is i've got to stop we were just joking this morning i know i made that comment i was i was thinking about this a little bit like if jesus showed up at our door would we be, be like Oh, shoot, everybody get the Bibles out, put everything bad away, and blah, blah, blah. But would we also do this because of our busyness? Would we? Love you, sis. <laughs> um, it, with our busyness, would we be like, Jesus, buddy, oh, I wish you'd have called. I got I to gotta party today. I got to do this. I got to fix this up for work. I, I'm so sorry. If you come by tomorrow, I'll have time for you. And in our lives, we may look at our problems and be lamenting our problems, but when Jesus comes knocking on our very heart, like, Jesus, not now. I don't have time today. I'll, I'll make time for you tomorrow. And he's like, hello, I'm the one trying to help you out of the pit, out of the miry clay, and you're not making time for me. Like, how do you expect to dig out of this hole until you can come to yourself and talk to yourself in a sense by saying, oh, my soul, you're not alone. You're not alone. With God, you are, he's always with us. A very present help in time of trouble, it says. I love that. So then I had a whole list of verses. I could give you, okay, I, I'll give you like two. And then I want to do my, what my concluding thoughts here. There's so many other verses in the Bible. Of course, you can't even imagine. Hebrews 13, 15. Through him, then, let us continually offer up sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Psalm 150, praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. That's a good song. Praise him in, the, praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Psalm 95, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Are, is, your, is your soul struggling, disquieted within me? Honestly, I've said this in the past. If you're struggling, pick your Bible up and split it in two, not with a knife, but you know, like cut the pages in half. Most of the time you fall on Psalms. Try it. You see what I'm talking about? Most Bibles, when you open the page, unless you got a ton of stuff at the end, all those concordance and the whatever. But get in the Psalms and start reading Psalms. I'm not kidding. To me, that that's just my that's my therapy piece if I need it. I need to hear direct. I go to the Psalms, but that's just me. Um, Ephesians 5 and 19. 
addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts. Colossians 3 and 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing you one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns, spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Oh, it's just a bunch of good ones. Oh, this one I was thinking. We used to sing songs like this. We'd sing these minor songs, Psalm 96 and 1. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. That's a good one too, isn't it? I'm telling you, we could just do a sing the Psalms morning. That would be kind of fun. We might do that sometime. All right, and I, this one, 1 Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen, chosen uh, priesthood. I, I know it says a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you might proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's an exciting promise. It's uh, when we talk about all these things. So I guess, look at that. Look at my notes I had to skip past. I, I over-prepared, but that's okay. I, the point is to get good. I know I, I did that message here not that long ago about goodness of God, and I'm still stuck on that. And I think you know my, these, this message even kind of echoes that connotation in the sense that there are times that you might need to talk to yourself, oh, my soul, and, and you can lament like the psalmist did, but you can also turn that lament into praiseworthiness in the midst of our difficulties and i'm one other song that i've been really stuck on this i'm going to leave you with my last thoughts i've been really stuck on brandon lake's version of gratitude and i know sean resung it and i said sean that's too weird that's been one of my jams lately i don't know why i've been stuck on this but i love i love the phrasing in that song he says i'm gonna throw up my hands and praise you again and again because what i've got in me is an alleluia it's a, it's a praise to him, and I love this part. And he says, and he's saying the same thing. It's the same premise I'm saying. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. You need to lift up that song. You've got a lion inside of you. There's something in you that was made to praise God. God the, the word says that if you quit praising, rocks are going to praise his name. The very inanimate objects around you will, will showcase his glory. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. You quit praising him. So let me just say it this way. Don't let somebody take your place. It's my praise. Let me give offer up my praise a sweet-smelling sacrifice aroma to God. So come on, my soul. If you've got to do some talking to yourself, do it. Take time this week. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. You lift up your song. You've got a lion within you, and you let that loose, and you give God the praise he deserves. And watch your circumstances change. Watch your circumstances change. I dare you. I dare you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your blessing in all things, Lord. You are a good God, Lord. And sometimes, sometimes we're our own worst enemies in all things. And, and we know it, and we acknowledge that, and your word gives us such good advice and teaching on how to, how to deal with that, how to deal with ourselves. And sometimes we just have to show, oh, my soul, there's something great within you that you acknowledge through us, that you've made a pathway for us. We praise you, and we love you, and we bless your name this morning. Amen.